So, uh, I got a joke for you. What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. Okay, here's another one. Why do cows wear bells? Because their horns don't work. One more. You'll love this one. How do snails fight? They slug it out. You know what? I'll stay away from the corny joke books, because I think you came here to hear about five more NASCAR drivers that you forgot about. But, before we start that, I just need to say one last thing. How do you befriend a squirrel? Just act like a nut. Tony Raines. So let's do a little throwback to a few weeks back when Kurt Busch went to victory lane in the 2018 night race at Bristol Motor Speedway. He did so in this race with the help of Tony Raines as a spotter. Raines has been a spotter for the past five years now, working for Front Row Motorsports, Richard Petty Motorsports, and now Stuart Haas Racing. Before this though, Raines was a race car driver from 1989 until 2013. He first started racing with NASCAR Southwest Series, where he'd make two starts and record one top five in these starts. He didn't go on to begin racing with NASCAR Southeast Series after this, and he'd make five starts here to get one top ten. Now in the Truck Series, he'd see two full seasons in 1997 and 1998, but then he'd make just one start in 1999, 2004, and 2013. So between a total of five years, he'd actually make 54 starts. During this, he'd see his biggest success with four wins, 11 top fives, 22 top tens, one pole award, 394 laps led, and a fifth place points finish in 1998. Then, from 1999 until 2013, Reigns would make 282 starts in the Xfinity Series where he'd record 15 top fives, 52 top tens, one pole award, and lead for 227 laps. And finally, for 13 years, he also made 180 starts in the Cup Series including full seasons in 2003, 2006, and 2007 where he'd go on to only record three top tens and lead for 37 laps. Now, although Reigns' driving career has come and gone, as I mentioned before, he is now making a positive impact in NASCAR as a spotter. Tim Fedewa Speaking of drivers turned spotters, Tim Fedewa is another great example of finding a better path after driving. Today, Tim Fedewa is very successful spotting for Kevin Harvick in the Cup Series, and obviously, this combination is working very well together to win a lot of races, especially in 2018. Tim is the son of a veteran driver of lower ranking racing series, Butch Fedewa. Fun fact, Butch Fedewa actually held the world record for speed on a 3.8 mile track, which was set at Kalamazoo Speedway, and this record actually held for 9 years before it was broken. Tim is also married to professional model Kelly Meadows and these two do have one child together. Now Fedewa becoming a spotter for Harvick after driving actually wasn't a big change as he had actually once spotted for Bill Elliott and then later on Kerry Earnhardt. But ironically Fedewa would actually end up being hired by Fitz Bradshaw Racing in 2003 to replace Kerry Earnhardt in the number 12 Dodge. During his time in a 12 car he recorded five top fives and one second place finish all in 2004. But in the first 21 starts of 2005 he never recorded a top 10, and as a result, he'd end up being released from this ride early on. He'd then go on to run one truck series race in 2006, and then he'd transition into being a spotter starting in 2007 with Red Bull Racing. Now, I briefly touched on only a small portion of Tim's racing career, but it actually spans back from 1990 to 2006. In 11 starts over 6 years in ARCA, Fedewa recorded 4 top 5s, 6 top 10s, and he led for 44 laps here. Between 3 years, he also made 9 starts in the Truck Series, but he only recorded 1 top 10. Within the Xfinity Series ranks, he got 25 top 5s, 66 top 10s, 4 pole awards, he led for 712 laps, and he got 4 wins in this series. But, most of his successful stats did come in the 1990s. And finally, he did make just one start in the Cup Series in 1994, but he only finished in 21st place in this race. Now, although he never saw great moments driving in the Cup Series, as I mentioned earlier, he is indeed having a great Cup Series career now as a spotter for Kevin Harvick. <laughs> Justin Labonte the Labonte brothers, Terry and Bobby, are two of NASCAR's most famous racing brothers, comparable to the Bush brothers, Kurt and Kyle. Terry Labonte is a two-time Winston Cup Series champion, and Bobby Labonte is a former Cup Series champion, having won in 2000. However, there was a third Labonte in the history books of NASCAR as well. The son of Terry and nephew of Bobby, Justin Labonte began racing at the age of 15 at Ace Speedway in Concord Motorsports Park. 
Justin also competed in the Legend Summer Shootout Series at Charlotte Motor Speedway, where he'd win back-to-back -back championships in 1996 and 1997. By 1997, Justin Labonte was beginning his USAR Pro Cup Series career. Between three seasons and 29 starts, he recorded five top fives, 18 top tens, one pole award, and he led for 245 laps. After three years there, he did move up into ARCA in 2000. He never ran full-time here, but he did get 11 starts where he got two top fives and three top tens, while also leading for 52 laps here. Then in 1999, he began racing within the Bush Series where he even ran one full season in 2005 when his number 44 car that was once owned by Terry Labonte merged over with the team of Gene Haas. After that season though, he only ran one more race in Rick Hendrick's number 5 car in the Bush Series and when his Bush Series career finished up, Justin Labonte ran in 76 races within the Bush Series where he was able to get one win in 2004 which was also his one top 5 and he did have a total of three top 10s while leading for 19 laps during his career. After this, he made three starts in a truck series with zero top tens here, and by 2007, he made his first and only start in the K&N series where he'd finish in eighth place, and that would be his last known stats within NASCAR. Today, you may still find him racing at local short tracks within North Carolina. <laughs> Eric Darnell Eric Darnell is most well known for being one of Roush Fenway's developmental drivers during the same time as David Reagan, with the help of longtime sponsor Northern Tool and Equipment. Coming up from NASCAR's various weekly racing series during the 2000s, he made a total of 63 starts across the three weekly series, where he got three wins, 17 top fives, 29 top tens, four pole awards, and he led for 486 laps. Then by 2006, he began racing full-time in a number 99 Northern Tools truck where he'd run three full seasons where he'd score two wins including a very exciting win of just 0.005 seconds over veteran driver Johnny Benson. He'd also pick up 16 top fives, 32 top tens, three pole awards, and he led for 396 laps during his truck series career. Darnell would also make 52 career Xfinity Series starts between six years for various teams where he'd get two top fives, five top tens, one pole award, and he'd lead for 20 laps. Finally, Darnell would only make nine career Cup Series starts, seven of which were in 2009, sharing races in the 96 car with Bobby Labonte. Come to think of it, wow. Both Terry and Bobby Labonte were still racing in NASCAR long after Justin Labonte stopped. Interesting. Anyways, back to Eric Darnell. After 2012, we haven't seen him racing within NASCAR anymore, but you can still find him today racing at various Midwest short tracks in America. <laughs> Max Gresham Born two years before me in 1993, Gresham is still at the age where he could get another chance, but not much has become of Max Gresham. Starting in 2009, Gresham began racing in the K&N East Series for Joe Gibbs Racing. He'd go on to win four races between three seasons while also scoring 13 top fives, 16 top tens, six pole awards, and he led for 573 laps. In 2011, he also won the K&N East Championship by 63 points over Daryl Wallace Jr. This was actually JGR's second K&N East Championship after their 2007 championship with Joey Logano. Gresham would also make 13 ARCA starts between three years years where he'd win one race in 2010 at Mansfield Motorsports Speedway. He'd also record three top fives, eight top tens, three pole awards, and he'd lead for 199 laps. Then in 2011, he made his first three starts in a truck series, and he was all set to run full-time in 2012 for Joe Dinette Motorsports as a teammate to NASCAR Hall of Famer Ron Hornaday Jr. However, with zero top tens and an average finish of 21st place, he was let go from that ride after only eight races, but he would then sign later in the season with Eddie Sharp Racing, who he'd race with until they shut down. He'd finish his truck series career with only one top five, five top tens, and three laps led after 43 starts. After his last truck race in 2014, there has been nothing for Max Gresham and we haven't heard much in recent times. And once again, that concludes another list of five NASCAR drivers that you forgot about. Know any more that should be in this series? Give the video a like and drop a comment down below. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter at DannyBTalks to stay updated on everything with me and my channel. If this is your first time hearing of my channel and you love content about NASCAR, then you have to hit subscribe right now and turn on notifications so that you never miss a video on Danny B Talks. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.